Good evening, friends. Uh, I thank Rack for asking me to speak to you on a subject which is very close to my heart, speaking about social justice in a digital world and also very much about what's uh, the for the future. Now, uh, the topic uh, which we are supposed to be talking about is digital justice. It's the public sphere in the digital world. However, today I'm going to talk a lot about digital economy. Uh, as they say in the US, it is the economy stupid. The reason for this is, and I'm not a person who generally would be talking economics, I'm the same kind of person I think with most of you sitting here interested in social justice, media issues, social, cultural, political side of things uh, more than the economic sides. Uh, but what is important today is to talk about digital economy for the reason that uh, we are at an historical juncture when the nature of economic changes are determining everything. We, we are standing uh, at the threshold of a completely di different paradigm and to understand it I normally take the example of industrial age. Now how do we define industrial age? What started the industrial age? Now, it can be defined by a simple technical thing. Uh, the fact that for the first time we had systems whereby physical power which was earlier always embodied inside human beings or animals was disembodied into machines at a large scale and that started the industrial revolution and everything changed after that the, there was cultural changes there were political changes social changes perhaps even philosophical changes and we know that age as the industrial age over the last two centuries we are still in that but now slowly we are shifting to another age which is digital age and the shift is as fundamental as what happened at the advent of the industrial age and to give an almost an exact parallel at that time there was a disembodiment of physical power from human beings and animals into machines and the advent of digital age is marked by the disembodiment of intelligence from animals and human beings, largely human beings, let's say, to machines. And the first time they are automated machines and systems which are able to take large scale systemic decisions by themselves. And large scale systems can work by automated intelligence and that's what is called digital age. So the point here is that if we need to look at digital justice, look at the public sphere in the digital world, we need to first understand the nature of digital economy and what is happening in the digital economy. And I gave you a stylistic comparison uh, with what happened with the industrial age. So in this new age, at the core of it, I mean, we are talking materialism here, that at the core of there are the material facts which are influencing all other things which we are interested in, the social justice, the digital media part of it. At the core of it are three phenomena, as often talked about, platforms which uh, represent a networking space, which becomes a major way every sector gets reorganized around platforms. Amazon reorganizes commerce, Uber reorganizes transport, and so on. And then there is data. We know all data being the most important resource and so on, which helps get insights about consumer behavior at the first level. But when it becomes really sophisticated, we call it artificial intelligence where large scale systemic decisions are being taken on an autonomous in an autonomous manner uh, so it is governance of platform governance of data and governance of artificial intelligence which we need to all be worried about now that's not very easy stuff but the question would come that how would social justice activists actually go into understanding data governance, AI governance, and platform governance. But the point is that we need to do it. The question is that how would we do it? But before that, I, I come to why we need to do it. I should also give some examples of how we are failing in our efforts to be uh, with issues of digital justice and a healthy public sphere uh, in, in the digital age if we do not look at the crux issues as I described. And efforts to mitigate the problems as they emerge in a band-aid fashion has not produced results. We know that famous example of the Australian uh, regulators trying to 
uh, redistribute the advertising uh, revenue between platforms and newspapers. It does work for some time. The same thing has been tried in France, in Spain, and other places, but it's quite a temporary solution. And it actually favors uh, large newspapers and large media houses and not small ones. Similar is with the Uber uh, workers being classified as employees uh, and other efforts uh, in, uh, in different sectors where we just try to uh, treat the symptoms. But what we need to do is to go down and see who owns the platforms, who owns data and who owns AI in different sectors. And sticking to an example of the digital media, and I think what we really need uh, in this area to have a healthy uh, digital media uh, is to have a platform which is decentralized, uh, a platform in which many social media can interact with one another based on common protocols. And it's not enough to just give them common protocols. Uh, they have to be enforced because if we just give them common protocols now there is a tendency of these things platforms data and ai these are the new resources the new material conditions which determine much of the social superstructures is that they're highly of a centralizing nature industrial capacities and industrial resources also had a centralizing tendency but that was nothing in front of uh, the centralizing tendency of intelligence, for example, or data or platforms. Now, unless countervailing forces are uh, set in motion, and they have to be mandatory forces, and that's where regulation comes in. A lot of digital uh, activists are averse to governments coming in. We know the reason of a totalitarian state uh, when it becomes a digitally totalitarian state, uh, uh, how bad things are. But we need to figure out the balance there. We need to bring in mandatory regulation so that multiple social media can work together on common protocols. And in the same way as we have emails, many email providers, uh, maybe you know our our friends may be sending us emails to different email providers, but we can all be read all those emails on a common email client, whether it's Outlook or, or it's a Thunderbird. In the same way, if we are able to read all our social media on a common client on uh, client ad application things change uh, and and therefore we need to be looking at these kind of solutions of decentralizing the platform uh, communities owning data uh, there are examples of communities owning data coming up in india i was a part of a committee which has come up with uh, community ownership of data things now these are all very complex issues but i'm just touching upon them uh, to tell or try to uh, stress that digital justice activists need to start understanding and I, I spend my last five minutes to see how this in, can be done uh, in, a, in a practical practical manner uh, but we have to be careful because even the owner of Twitter Jack Dorsey is looking at some decentralized media but there the value layer is shifting to the recommendation engines and uh, they think that as long as they have the most superior AI, they can still control the media space, even if it is a bit decentralized. So there is an issue of decentralized the platform, but also of community ownership of data and of artificial intelligence. Uh, public utilities uh, should be some part of the whole ecosystem. Uh, community ownership would be one part of the ecosystem. And generally decentralized, smaller private players uh, would be other part of the system. So we are moving trying uh, internally at id for change to make programs. We, have, we are helping decentralize the digital economy, not helping it, but trying to come out with concepts to decentralize uh, digital economy, but also is required at the same time structural separation of vertically integrated digital value chains, uh, which can be cut along business lines and technical lines as net neutrality does in one layer, but we can separate cloud computing, data collection, AI services, and they should all belong to different uh, different uh, private players. And some of them would be perhaps community or a public uh, sector thing. Now, how do social uh, sector activists actually deal with such complex problems? And one thing uh, why I, I spoke of all these problems is that in many ways, these problems are common, whether there is a health activist 
or a media activist or an environment activist, an education activist, a trade justice activist, many of these problems are common. So what is happening is that uh, individually actors in each of these areas are not able to fight their battles in the digital uh, space. And you would have seen it all over the time. There's a lot of frustration because it's very difficult to understand the digital issues. But at the same time, leaving all these digital policy issues, whether it's AI governance, data governance, or platform governance, to so-called digital experts is also a problem because these policies have to be developed with close connection to the points of impact and the points of impacts are in the respective sectors as in media I was talking about, but then in health, education, environment, trade, uh, gender, and so on. So what uh, we are doing uh, in a project uh, with the help of WAC uh, and uh, some other funders is to develop working groups between digital activists on one side and sector activists on the other. So there are, uh, these kind of working groups are being developed uh, in uh, eight areas. Uh, you start from trade justice, we have it on environment, we have it on agriculture, we have it uh, on health, gender, finance, uh, and uh, media also. So some of them have already started functioning, others we are talking to, uh, the key organization also in, in labor. So we're trying to develop some spaces between digital activists and sectoral actors because I think we need views from both sides to together inform digital policy making which alone will allow us to move towards digital justice uh, frameworks which we, uh, we, we, we want all of us to move in. So this project uh, is already trying to create these spaces. I welcome uh, people who would like to join that uh, project. In media, we are trying to get talking with some top organizations in this area and trying to develop it, but it has started in some other, other areas. So the effort is also to not only have a bilateral approach between trade justice activities and the digital activities along eight tracks, but also after these tracks are working, all of them together also develop common conceptions of how digital justice would look like. And as I said earlier, the digital justice would have components like platform justice, data justice, and AI justice. And we have to break it into all these. We have to understand the economics of these uh, resources or this phenomenon. Uh, and then alone in a very sophisticated, systematic manner, can we address the problem uh, of uh, attaining uh, digital justice and having a healthy uh, media in the digital age. So I will end uh, my presentation here, uh, but welcome to uh, take questions and I welcome people who want to join our initiatives at uh, any time they can write to us or write to the VAC team who can uh, connect uh, you to us. Thank you very much and I hope you uh, have a great uh, conference.